Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, NVIDIA has released the Titan of Terror. And no, don't ask, you can't afford it. And remember that neat guy who made Steam Spy? We all loved him. Well, Epic hired him to make it their new store. Batmobile got his head box sealed and gamers cannot pay to win. Also, NVIDIA, NVIDIA gets PhysX call and shows us some of that naughty, naughty code. Steam Link is dead. Long live the Steam Link. And in true Valve time, Counter-Strike goes to battle Royale. That didn't Jeez. work. Man, you died. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by our team Canadian podcaster as one master swing, Jordan Swing, you know him, you love him, and uh, in his new place in Britannia, from his other new place in Britannia, that is Pedro Mateus, and together with you, hanging out at home, <laughs> that's right, in Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us form the most important bit we like to call Cocaine Voltron. Hi, kids. Oh, that would have been really good. Oh man, would have been really good timing if the Krieger thing came Boom. up just as you said, "Cocaine Voltron." Go. Yeah, all right. Yeah, listen, we, we missed effort that. was made. Uh, before we get going, we do like see what's going on in each other's life organs. I've been doing a lot, man. It's just been like raining for like four or five days straight. If it rains another day, I'm building an ark and planting like three Jesuses so Santa Claus can eat them. I don't know how it works out, but that's what I'm doing. What about I, you, I, Jordan? I, 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 I mean, as ha having never celebrated Christmas, I have no reason to assume that that's incorrect. Wait, is, uh, therefore... wait a minute. Ha has Hanukkah started yet? Uh, I think Hanukkah ended already. Really? Yeah, it's or a, at it, the it, beginning of December. Eight crazy well, nights. That, 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 that's the thing. It's a lunar calendar, so it, it changes every year because it's, uh, it's not in sync with the Gregorian calendar. Well, fine. <laughs> I'm going to tape the puppy. I got you back up together in one piece. Anyway, Pedro, what's up? Uh, <laughs> well, over here, uh, the things have been moved. I'm waiting for furniture. Uh, DPD fucked up my desk delivery and then sent me a really condescending cookie sa saying that they were sorry. Mother, really? <laughs> it, it, wait, wait, con con condescending cookies? It, it, yeah. it was a cookie that begged to be shopped, and I'm disappointed <laughs> in everyone who was in Discord earlier today. I happened to pop in there. When everybody bailed on me at lunch and I was like, man, there's a nice clean slate to uh, write anything you want. Didn't see anything. Didn't see anything. Nope. <laughs> but, man, thousand yard stare because we're going to talk about the horse. And guess what, man? Our horse, it's seen some shit. Listen, man, we we thought that the, the, the horse link has gone away, but it just got moved to a raspberry pie. It's the Steam Linux Update. <laughs> how, how, how probably more than there are on a raspberry pi 12 14 14 buttons so uh, a few weeks ago we talked about how the uh the uh, the not the raspberry pi the steam link had uh well they basically run out of units and they're not making any new ones Giggity. so uh someone felt like there was a bit of a gap in the market and uh, <laughs> valve decided to release a damn Giggity. file for ARM, so you can run the Steam Link app on your Raspberry Pi. Ooh, look at it. It's an A+. Ooh. Oh, I, honestly, I'm not surprised. I'm surprised that this didn't really happen sooner. Mm -hmm. Considering that people have been mm -hmm. trying to, like, hack Moonlight together. We, we actually got some hate mail on the subject, too. Um, people have been trying to hack Moonlight to work with NVIDIA Game Stream so you can get something similar via your Raspberry Pi. Um, it's good mm -hmm. to see some official support, but... A, 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 a dot deb man come on you know I, you, I, you, I, I i i know i know why they did it i understand i understand but god damn it god damn it that was years of my life down the I, toilet listen man as somebody who had to package <laughs> things for pie I, I i kind of feel you on that it's good to know that link lives on because i i think most everyone knew that the first time this thing went on sale for like two fucking dollars last year mm -hmm. it was like yeah they quit making it they're getting rid of stock and, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was like, hey, we still have some stock left. It's on sale again. But now it's a collector's <laughs> item because we're not going poof. Everyone bought one. It's like mm -hmm. clever girl. Um, the, 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 other, listen, the other thing, man, too. All right. I'm just going to say on that, I, I understand your pain with it not being RPM. But, I mean, we're talking 99% of the install base <laughs> on Pi. I, 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 but I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying ship it as an RPM. I'm saying, like, ship it as a tarball or something. Just, just, just a just a vendor neutral format. Oh, um, but, you can but, treat a dev like a uh, like a Tardot GZ. You, you, you yes, just you, extract you, it. 
You 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 can. It is an R file containing a zip, just like an mm -hmm. RPM. It's just a CPI archive with some additional metadata that gets run. Um, here's here's the thing though. The the Steam Link was in effect a Raspberry Pi when we had MT come on when he got his. And it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, if you, if you, if you do like a if you just like proc cat CPU info and you just probe the hardware, it's basically like a cut down Raspberry Pi anyways. So yeah, this is <laughs> you're 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 not losing out by making your own. Was all, was all but yeah, it it was a great move by Valve. It's like okay, so we don't make the hardware, but hey, there's a lot of people running Raspberry Pis attached to their TVs out there. So let's just put out something that they can use, and they did. <laughs> At the end of the day, none of this matters. Steam's just trying to get rid of excess inventory and opening it up because they're about to go out of business. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> it's the end of the world. So, um. There's an, there's an Epic Store that's gonna get launching or that's gonna get launching. Yes, that's that's English. I I am talk communicate good. Um, <laughs> there um it's gonna be curated. Uh, it's it's gonna be a set of curated uh, Windows only titles. The big draw here is Epic is only charging twelve percent for um for their cut. Uh, but and every, everyone's like, oh my god, Valve finally gonna get some competition. Fortnite is take has taken off like hotcakes. And mm -hmm. with that with with having that in people's homes already. It's fairly trivial to get people to go to the an Epic Store to buy additional games, um, but here here here's the thing though. Uh, the, there, there's a there's a quote in the article here that says the store will launch with a hand curated set of games on PC and Mac, and then will open up more broadly to other games and to Android and other open platforms. So 2019. Here's the thing though. Given the fact that Epic has basically the the most Epic has done for Linux support has said, "Hey, UE4 technically compiles on Linux. Everything else has been done by the community." Mm -hmm. um, I'm not really holding my breath. And the nope. the other thing too is, as Linux gamers, like th th this this is good as as a whole for the PC gaming market because Valve finally has some competition. But we're still a captive audience. There's not that many uh, new Linux games coming out. And Epic is not going to be providing something like Proton. That seems entirely out of their wheelhouse. So we're yeah. we as Linux gamers are probably not going to be going anywhere, even if this takes off. Yeah, no. When you have uh, Steam that gives you Proton, cloud saves, in-home streaming, family sharing, it's like there's a whole lot more to Steam than just uh, the devil that you know. Recently, the internet's been painting it out to be. Don't get me wrong. Valve has done their share of questionable things. But yeah, when you're on Linux, what other option do you have? Because yeah, Epic doesn't give a shit about Linux. GOG doesn't give a shit about Linux. So I'm all for some competition, but it it needs to compete, not just be another thing. Stockholm Syndrome, ladies and gentlemen, live <laughs> on air for your viewing enjoyment. I got to look at it like this. Uh, no matter how you slice this, this is good news. Uh, I read the announcement, I sat back, I petted my non-existent cat, and it's like, so it begins. Because guess what? Valve needs some fucking, Valve even realizes that even if it doesn't want competition, it's gonna get it. It's been getting its shit together. I mean, this completely mm -hmm. explains Steam's new progressive revenue scheme that out of the kindness of their fucking hearts rolled out last week, and they're like, listen, Triple A companies, we're not going to completely screw you over if you don't have that WhatsApp, but that's it. You're not going to read. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Fallout 76 isn't doing too well. So, yeah, right. You even had uh, upset. <laughs> you had Microsoft now because they acquired Obsidian. Yes. And they're like, hey, we're, not, we're releasing a new game. We made the good Fallouts. Mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's enough talk about Epic. <laughs> No, it's All right, not. Let's, let's, That's a let's lie. Talk about Epic. Yeah, let's talk about Epic. Uh, turns out the guy behind Steam Spy, which, you know, Steam Spy, hella useful tool. We've all used it. We all love it. Uh, has been working on the Epic Steam Store for years. This is a real thing. This absolutely is going down. And again, I had to sit back and, you know, that's all kinds of interesting. Building a store. Well, if I'm going to build a store, might as well hire the guy who was more attentive to the Steam Store than Steam. If we're being honest, mm -hmm. huh? yeah, except, yeah. Except the, the 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 there's a question of timing here because he says several years. How old is Steam Spy as a project? That was the thing I was meaning to look up. Um, but I don't I don't think it's that old. It's um, at least a couple of years old. 
at, at least a couple years old. I see, here's here's the thing that rubs me the wrong way about this article is that there's very much a tone of oh he he oops I was working on <laughs> Steam Spy but I'm also working on the Epic Store. What a, what a funny coincidence. No no this <laughs> this is a smart business move from Epic right here. They have yeah. pay, have have a guy paying attention to the analytics of their competition. There's that old quote: the study the student study strategy, the master studies logistics. This is this is basically this. Um, and you, the the other thing too, the, the the if if you notice, there's a line in the article that says, "Oh well, the Epic Store is not going to be providing the same sort of analytics that uh, that Steam once did." Oh, I, I wonder why. <laughs> so that future competition will not get the same leg up that the Epic Store did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, it kind of had been, you know, kind of uh, just just desserts for the guy who involves like, hey, we're cutting off the access and kind of crippling your program. And he's like, yeah, all right. Don't worry about <laughs> That's, it. That, that also explains like his like nonchalant responses. Like, yeah, it's fine. Whatever. We'll, what we'll, we'll, all right. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I do get like a little bit of a sinking feeling about this. You know, you know, Valve not courting this guy and acquiring him to work at Valve. Um uh, I kind of wonder if this is going to be looked at like when Nintendo basically told so Sony to go fuck itself back in the day, creating like their biggest yeah. Yeah. PlayStation. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, no, we I, don't need you. We're too big. Ma. And I, 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 this I, is probably I, a really good guy to have on your team. And I think Epic, Epic was smart to yoink. I'm so that's that's something again, given given the time frames here, given several several years, that might explain why Valve hasn't scooped them up because every time Valve makes them an offer, Epic's like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll toss another 50k on that. Why not? See, yeah, I, 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 I like that fanfic, but if Valve wanted that dude, they would have him. Valve could write that check, R Valve could write checks handily that Epic couldn't yeah, come up with. Valve cash. has basically okay, all let of me the rephrase money. that pre Fortnite, they couldn't now, they can probably <laughs> write the check. Yeah. <laughs> but you might you know might as well at this point it's not like valve was actually doing anything with the questionable value that he added mm -hmm. to steam with steam spy so yeah no good on him it's uh, a brilliant thing so uh lat i made something just for me but i was like hey i made it and I, there's not even a thing that links to it on our web zone but it's there <laughs> if you want to go to linuxgamecast.com forward slash uh, steam dash whitelist because i got tired of all the other lists being in the first part and the second part and i mm -hmm. couldn't find it handily anywhere so i made one for myself it's there if you ever need it like what's that it's, it's uh, for proton it just tells you the games that are currently on the whitelist for steam with you know use for the proton it links to a mixture of directly to the steam store and other things on proton db maybe that'll be of use maybe not but you know what it's not hurting anyone so does, do, no. does, does it does it scrape something or is it just manually updated it's manually updated all right it's not hard okay. to keep manually updated <laughs> let's be honest valve yeah, time I'm, I'm, I'm just asking the question man yeah but yeah, no, as someone who was looking for like the complete list of all the whitelisted games when they released the second roundup, it's like, oh yeah, no, that that that's useful. <laughs> yeah, the uh the 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 one on uh, Steam DB is not very useful because you get like all the little speech bubbles or whatever is like, oh, th these manifests have been added and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's not very easy to parse, so it's it's good that nope. you have something. This is a flat text and uh that's the thing. Uh Rocket Cars Christmas update. Oh, oh, Christmas cars. Oh, Christmas cars. Blam. Yeah. So there's a December update for um, version 1.56. A bunch of Xbox and PlayStation 4 things here. Um, they've uh, they've what made the hell's a thing. monster cat? It's it's <laughs> the 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 fl uh, flag or something or the. Pedro, oh, no, I, Pedro I, I, you know I what think, the kids like. What's, what's a monster cat? Jordan has no That's idea. He's just bullshit. No idea. <laughs> right. We're old. Um, Get off of our collectible lawns. I, I I don't understand the wubs, but any but anyways, they got some new community stuff in here. Um, the big thing though is that they're rebalancing some of the sc in-game scoring, not necessarily for um like actually winning or losing games, but for your own personal scores. So now you get po two points per ball touch per second, <laughs> and I don't really want or need this information telling me how good or bad I am at Rocket League. <laughs> any given day <laughs> uh that's just gonna make me feel bad um apparently there's also a bit of a bug with this apparent with this release apparently if you're creating a tournament uh you may not be able to spectate on matches which would suck if you want to actually broadcast said tournament um, you know we we just need to organize and get it when i say we it's going to be i need to do it and set it up and because we have so many 
people that want to play it. And if we could just get some teams together, we could do that because we have the system mm -hmm. and everything to do it. So yeah, start bugging me about it and we'll get it together, but I won't be able to spectate. Yeah, the uh, the uh, the other thing too is uh, they've added a plank body type, and they've sort of reduced the complexity plank. of some of the various plank. Well, they yeah. already had the plank body type uh, cars, like you know, if you didn't buy any of the DLC ones, uh, the Paladin is Pedro, like the those cars are pay to win, car. Pedro. You shut up. <laughs> well, oh, they're not pay to win, bro. Because, pay to win. Uh, the Batmobile basically uh, is now the default uh, hitbox for all of the plank cars so if you are playing with the mantis or the paladin or any of the dlc you see, ones pedro, the, pedro you pedro, have the they, same no hitbox. they've changed it therefore my conspiracy <laughs> theory about it being pay to win was right all along Ten five. Uh, yes. yeah. <laughs> now now, now here, here, here's the real, real question when bruce wayne plays rocket league does his version of the batmobile have pay to win features no he's like <laughs> us man he's riding on the fucking ceiling going we Oh, no, his car's hitbox is the biggest it can be. <laughs> yeah. So, do we have any uh, game updates this week? We do. Anything? We got. We got. We got a couple. Uh, first one here is for a damsel. Damsel is a game. Damn, uh, damsel. Yeah. Damsel. It, 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 it's a, a, it's, it's an it, <laughs> yeah. damn. So it's a, it's an action platformer. Damn, um, it's done damn, in Unity. Damn. Apparently. There, there, I, I remember there being some some word of like, oh yeah, we have an engine update that allows us to support Mac and Linux now, but it's a Unity game, so they clicked export. Um, <laughs> the, the one neat thing with this update alongside the Linux support is they added a couple accessibility options, like um, like a more dyslexic friendly font, uh, and there's some color, uh, there's some color puzzles, color matching puzzles that they've also added a. Uh, some rumble support too so if you're uh if you have like color blindness you can also do the puzzles without like not getting completely wrecked because you can't see what the colors are Get wrecked. which i which, which <laughs> think is a nice touch um yes yeah so it's 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 available right now it's 23 dollars canadian that's a bit steep can we get um, some multiplayer for that price no 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 no, no, sir. no, no sir. single player all the time <laughs> Hey man, it's been nominated twice for 2018. Good on it. Um, <laughs> wow. And never won. <laughs> no crazy system requirements. And uh, hey, that's the thing. Wanted to give it a mention. Dead by yes. Death. I want to play that game. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the Motorhead song. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, the big one. Yeah. Valve, uh, you know, besides releasing that card game, they also released a new game mode. Oh, CSGO. For, did, we, did, did, did we finally get hats? No, no, oh, not hats. Damn it. <laughs> we, 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 we got jumpsuits, though. <laughs> yeah, jumpsuits and more weapon skins. I've already unlocked one of the new weapon skins. You can see the uh, little uh, submachine gun that the guy on the left is holding. That's no one, one of the cares. new custom the skins. going to tell us all about his skins. And and afterwards, no, I'll tell you some my DD character. It's a teeny tiny little battle royale mode that you can get into. Uh, if you're playing solo, it's uh, up to 16 people. If you're playing with teams, it's up to 18 people. And it's, uh, well, it's a very small map. And uh, the rounds are kept to uh, around 10 minutes. I think that's the time limit. And it's that's actually a very good thing. Because having watched some people play like PUBG and Fortnite... Those matches can go on for an hour. Uh, so it's nice to have like 10 minutes, go in, go out, get another one, go, 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 go. I like that. See us go. This update made this game a little bit crashy for me. Which Just update? a little bit. Which update, Pedro? Because I installed it yesterday morning. Uh, when I get back to the house, there's about 11 o'clock. There were like four of them. And I know before we were playing, we played it last night on uh, the FUBAR. Mm -hmm. It had received four updates yeah mm -hmm. no I, it's the the latest one and it's not just me because uh someone uh has created an issue on the uh the github mm -hmm. for uh like the bug tracker for csgo on linux and yeah everyone seems or not everyone but a lot of people seem to be having the same issue i am which is the first round you can play it just fine but the second one uh the game would crash as soon as you deployed they would just ctd crash the desktop well we spent so, an entire hour getting together with it trying to get it to play we ran into some bugs but that was our biggest issue was how it rolls up because it's free to play now and mm -hmm. if you already own the game you get what like a special badge that says thank you and you're not getting a refund it's free to play now deal with it <laughs> but it segments the people who are 
between that and the people who are getting it for free. They have to level up. They have to get good. They have to prove to Valve that they're not getting in there just causing grief. And the way you do that is play a shitload of it. You can't really get matchmaking going on, as we learned last night, over the period of an hour, uh, unless everyone's in the same group. I'm like, do we all own the game? That's what you're watching from our gameplay last night. But outside of that, the only issue I story had with it, I'm sorry, you said words. What did you say? Let, I, is, is it is it a better love story than the culling? Well, in the fact that it fucking works and we don't have like a mm -hmm. cascade of crashing, yeah, very much. Also, it's CSGO, so it's hyper-performant, depending on which update you played yesterday because there were moments yesterday where Intel integrated graphics just ate poo. And mm -hmm. that wasn't going to happen. Then they fixed that, but then it was only managing like 15 FERPs on Intel integrated. Then AMD ate shit. Then they got that fixed. Anyway, if you got NVIDIA, it just fucking worked. Unless, unless, gentlemen, you had an Xbox controller plugged in, then it would just nope right to desktop. After the <laughs> update number three, uh, it would load and die. It's like, <laughs> wait a minute. All right, NVIDIA drivers, because I was running the uh, like... 493 whatever so i just put it up on 415 nope still dying it's like could it be because i knew i'd plugged in the xbox controller instead of my steam controller because i was playing around with the assassin's creed google stream thing to see how that was going unplugged it runs fine so you can put in no joy in your launch options if you don't want to physically unplug it yeah, the, for me, the only thing that fixed the crashing was uh, th th there will be a description in the show notes so you can uh, do it yourself, see if it helps you. Setting uh, setting dot mem underscore level to zero and the uh, Steam user data user ID 730 local CFG video TXT. That's the file you want to be looking for. Mm. And uh, yeah, no, that got rid of the crashing for me entirely, but it does seem to have introduced a little bit of the herky jerks. So uh, Valve's going to need to fix something. <laughs> we'll stick around for the after shows, and we're definitely going to try to make it crash a few times for that. Mm -hmm. All right, Gertie. Gertie, Gertie. Yeah, down. all right. Her, her, it's, it's Gertie. It's, it's an action game. It's, so it's, it's basically Enter the Gungeon with, uh, with destructible environments. One of those uh, roguelike twin-stick shooters with the hipster pixel aesthetic. Here's the thing that pisses me off about this game, though, is if you scroll down to, to its little, little feature list, it's got single player. It's got local co-op with shared split screen. That's it. Devs, devs, devs. Don't, don't stop doing that. Keep, <laughs> let, let, let's, let's just let's just put a blanket rule in place where if you're not going to have online multiplayer in your game, do not add multiplayer in the first place. It's got a demo though, so you can play in mm -hmm. forever alone mode for the blow low price of free. <laughs> other, 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 otherwise, you're paying sixteen bucks or whatever. Mm. Seven, eighteen dollars yeah. Canadian um, 15, on sale. Normally it's twenty. Freedom. Yeah, I, yeah I, I, I I looked at the graphics like, oh, so it's Star Wars Rogue, but with different sprites. I, I like this motherfucker's optimism, though. Additional <laughs> notes. Microsoft Xbox 360 controller. Other controllers <laughs> might work to variable degree. <laughs> that, 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 you know what? That's a fair statement. Right. Being honest. I can respect that. Yes. That, 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 is, that is a not <laughs> false statement. So good on them for that. Uh, right. But finally, fin finally, uh, Farrell gets a bit derpy. Yeah, a little bit. So I got this email uh, earlier in the week, as I'm sure everyone else here did as well. And it's like, Dirt 4 on track for macOS and Linux in 2019. And I'm, and I'm thinking, wait a second, wasn't there a Humble Bundle that had Dirt 4, which I got specifically at that level just so I could try it with Proton and it actually works? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, so now Feral is uh, also bringing the nativeness. And if they do what they did with Dirt Rally, that's fine. Dirt Rally runs very, very well. But it, it, it Valve, we need that goddamn button. We need that goddamn button right goddamn now. <laughs> well, well, why do you say it like that, Pedro? I, I got to pick your brain meats on that. Uh, why? In this particular the instance. It's not this particular game. It's just a game that I know for a fact that works well with Proton. Mm -hmm. And uh, now Feral is going to uh, introduce its own janky port, maybe. Possibly not, because again, Dirt Rally worked well enough. But well, well, it that, is well, a thing that's, that's going to happen more and more. So, and, and, and that's the important thing. I don't think, I don't think Dirt had the Windows uh, Linux multiplayer, right? 
Yeah. Did it? Uh, Wait. No. Which one did we try with Josh? I think that was Dirt. That, that was that, that, uh, that, grid, that was one of grid. grid. That was oh grid. yeah, gr- yeah, grid, grid auto squirt. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah, and 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 that's the thing. All all of a sudden, people who are playing this with Proton, uh, who were enjoying multiplayer with their friends, can no longer do that. I don't know. I think the Codemaster has been cross-platform <laughs> because even when I went on to multiplayer, there were other people playing. Yeah, Maybe. no multiplayer and Dirt Rally. I think you could do uh, also Windows. Uh, though I'm not entirely sure. I know you could do like you could see your Windows friends' scores, so you would always uh, be able to track mm-hmm. their times. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, I, I look forward to it, and I want uh, Feral to keep putting up. I mean, they. Yes, please. No, Feral, yeah. don't get this wrong. This isn't on you. This you need to bring more games to Linux, please. God, I, I, more. I, I, I think I think though this this is this is symptomatic of the fact that like yeah they they agreed to port these games like years in advance and mm-hmm. that those contracts did not uh, predict Proton. At they, they, all. Did, they did not predict the fuck bomb that Valve was like. No. yo, uh, yeah. we're, we're gonna like do wine and we're gonna have the DXVK. Okay, so the no, you click the play button. Like oh shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, then again, hey, know. hey, it's feral. Feral knows Feral's not dumb. You you see what they're pushing. You look at their social mm-hmm. media. They're like, hey, look at this game that works on iOS now. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. They, they and, know. And, and, and then they they're, they're still going to have Max as a captain market, like you've said before, Ben. So right, all right. Let's get out of here. All right. Coming up next. Oh my God, we have to cover our filthy, disgusting bodies with something. I wonder if Linux Gamecast has a solution for us. Also, um, NVIDIA open sources physics or something less important. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have a special... Ad- well, this isn't Look really at me. news. I'm you already know about this. It, it, we have a, a new thing where no, you don't. can buy stuff that uh, directly supports us and you can go outside and pretend like you're not a complete nerd. Which so here, 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 it's a lie. No, man. Here, here's, here's this motherfucker, if, 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 he, he takes off one week and he just starts making shit up. <laughs> sir, sir, oh, 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 okay, so we, 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 got, we got to do the regular thing. We, we, we love all the supporters. Go to linuxgamecast.com, click the support button, click the Patreon button, follow Ooh. the instructions there. But we got, we, got, we, got, we got some big news. You can finally cover your shame. We're, every, everyone is tired of looking at your disgusting naked body. And we have the solution. You can go to linuxgamecast.com slash store. Uh, maybe maybe you'll get a misprint because uh, one of the first bugs we shipped <laughs> Chill, has, some, has some misprints. But <laughs> there's definitely a thing. We, we got a couple designs for y'all. We got, we got, we got the Frankophile. We got the one chair and we got the Hail Santas. Oh, we also got, I guess we also got the three chair moon. Three chair moon. You see, <laughs> I, I just kind of made that on a lark because I was sitting there and I was like, oh, I thought about doing that for a while. And, and Pedro's like, I already ordered one. <laughs> No, it's uh, it's going to be a hoodie, and I haven't ordered it yet because I don't have a whole lot of money. <laughs> I had to buy a bunch of furniture. But... I, 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 I don't know, man. Teespring's kind of fucking it up, so maybe you'll get some collector's items. Hey, man, it's like a Model T, but better. We have everything available in black and pink. That's oh, right. Yes. <laughs> it's kind of brilliant. It's kind of real. I know you guys made it possible, the beautiful party patrons, that... We get everything together and stuck together. But speaking of patrons, man, we got 113 awesome, best people on the internet. Two Aww. things. We're making they, this they, show they... possible, letting us do it at this crazy, insane, like, semi-quality production level. Yes. <laughs> it's terrifying, man. Kicking us 265 wet, stinky caches a month. And what, 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 what's, what's our next goal? Dude, hang oh. on. I, I'm trying to tell them about all the sweet, sweet, super shit they get <laughs> if you become a patron, man. You want to tell them about it? Hey man, you get access to our early shit. We got some locked up things, but we don't have anything behind a paywall. But you get early access to things like Game of Who. You well, all right, pre pre super shows. And if you're back at us, man, if you're a Death Note or above, you get to watch that. You get to watch that an hour early. Come hang out in our Discord. Speaking of Discord, you get access to that with some of the weirdest, most awesome critters in the world hanging out with us right now. Over a hundred and some odd random number. I love them all. And you get a custom RSS feed along with another gang of neat stuff. Look at Frank. He's so happy. I was speaking to Frank. If you get anything on our wish zone, you end up on Frank's fine up Sandy Cannibal Wall and featured in our credits. Look at that. Salesmanship. Da, da, oh, da, da. Yes. <laughs> All right. And we, 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 we got to cut away from Nicolas Cage lactating Frank because that's just too obscene to switch. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> so, um, first off, we got some NVIDIA news, Ven. No, man. What are you talking about? Oh, are we talking about <laughs> NVIDIA unveiling the Titan RTX Fuck Your Wallet edition? Yeah, mm-hmm. $2,500. <laughs> Turing Tensor Terror out later this month. This was, uh, I, I really liked it when they're, uh, oops, we leaked it on our YouTube video, NDA expired that day, and all the YouTubers were like, oh, look, it's accidentally in the background, and it's a thing. But <laughs> I looked at this, and I was like, hey, NVIDIA, I know you're going to be like, this isn't a gaming card, it's for scientific and research, and it's really just a cut-down version of the Quadro that's not $4,000, so it's really a deal, <laughs> even though we only expect gamers to buy it. It's like, can this thing do RTX on, can, can this give me accurate reflections and mud puddles at 1440p at 60 nvidia can you do that for me because you better be able to fucking do it for me at 2500 bucks son i mean i mean that that, that core count is a little disappointed given some of the other uh, 24 other... gigajoules of video bits video bits, yeah man. it has a lot of vram i guess the i mean i'm sorry this is nvidia 23.5 <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the 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 remaining five gigabytes is on the is the slow RAM. It's fine. I, I mean, yeah, if 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 you if you want to push some like crazy multi display shit, or if you're going to be doing like deep learning or anything like that, maybe some <laughs> deep like learning. Just have like a fuck you tilde with a voltage. <laughs> yeah, it was it's like, like <laughs> approximately ten thousand dollars for the it, Tesla. It, I, I mean, that price varies depending on how many of those you order. So that's, yeah. that's sort of that that that's no, the thing that. Uh, Looking at that chart, the only thing I see is the Titan V is still the single most powerful sub 5k GPU out there. So, yeah. <laughs> this this is just falls squarely into it, it's porn, man. I, I'm going to look at it the same way. I'm never going to have it, never going to own it. It's but, so pretty. Never going to have one. Right. Uh, yeah. Wants it, but. Yeah, no, I want a Titan V. If anyone out there uh, decides to shell out, what is it, three thousand dollars now? Yeah, please. I, 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 I don't, I don't know, Pedro. What's Wimpy up to? That's how you got your last card, right? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, that was because I helped them with uh, diagnosing some of the issues that Ubuntu Made had, and uh, yeah, he hasn't asked for help recently. So me, because <laughs> because because he because he knows what the gold price is. Be be thankful he's not taking the iron price. <laughs> Hey man, uh, uh, he offered. <laughs> he offered. I how said, about we I talk about what's going on with Nvidia and PhysX, though? Yeah, let, 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 oh, let's, let's yes. talk. Let's talk about some practical applications for all this RTX on nonsense <laughs> that you can buy for twenty five hundred dollars. Nvidia PhysX is now open source. It's available. It's on a GitHub. Um, this is exciting. If you ask some people, this is kind of meh. If you ask others, so here, here, here's the thing. Um. NVIDIA PhysX always worked like on on non NVIDIA hardware, right? You, it would just mm-hmm. be done on the CPU. So now that this now that the code's available, maybe at some point, someone someday in the far distant future will hack it to work on non NVIDIA GPU hardware. Um, but this 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 is an interesting move from NVIDIA because it 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 means it's symbolic of a couple things. Number one, they specifically call out applications of physics. Um, in their in this uh, little press release, and they call it self driving cars, which what we learned last <laughs> week or not last week, last year. Oh man, that's that, that's, that's what so she good. likes though. <laughs> mm. uh, oh man, the, 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 this this is this is a live footage of like the robots coming to destroy us. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> the robot army is coming. No, wait, a tennis ball just yeah. hit him. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but there's just so many of them, and they're self-replicating. But yeah, um, they call it a number of applications for physics. They want people to start using it. This is either Ven. Ven, you had an interesting theory on Wednesday, where like this is dead tech now, so they're just open sourcing it in the hopes that people will use it. I think it's more, hey, this is a finished product. We we've read the cathedral and the bazaar. We decided, you know what, cathedral is the way to go. Here's our finished product. Have have fun with it. Maybe standardize Listen, on it. It is ready. If you want to program an electronic arm to fuck up your cupboard. Nvidia's got your back. Oh yeah, fuck that mustard <laughs> in particular. Or, 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 or what, what, what's 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 that company Cyberdyne who, who make those robots and then they abuse them on YouTube? Oh, and then you just mean, like, uh, oh, Boston Dynamics. Yeah, yeah Bo- Boston Dynamics. <laughs> yeah, this is this is some of the software powering the machines that will eventually rise up and murder us all. Well, I mean, it's a big technology, and as you said, everyone can use it, and it's not GPU dependent. And I, I kind of did some research with on Wednesday. 
It's like, oh, gaming, we can finally use the hardware and it'll work with Linux. And then I went some digging around then. 70, not even 70 games. It's like 65 to 68 games, best I could track down, have used physics in the game over the last 12 years. So I, th I think the only one we've ever covered was like Trine. Or yeah, is that <laughs> I don't know, man. It's no Tress FX, baby. <laughs> no, no, no. Although that is source available as well. Uh, the, you know, I'm interested to see what the ramifications of this will be. Gaming or not, I want to see if anyone else will put this to use or, uh, you know, as a whole, or if they'll just cherry pick like, ooh, I like oh. this bit. Ooh, I oh, like no, this they're, bit. They're, 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 they're 100% going to strip mine this for parts. No, man, this yeah. is going to be like RTX Ombra. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I mean, it, I mean, AMD wants a bit of a taste of that, right? Oh shit! Speaking oh, yeah. of that, man, look at all those numbers. <laughs> yes, they do. Number so, uh, uh, the Navi, which has b long been rumored hey, that listen, it's coming, hey, you guys, it's going to be great. Uh, and well, uh, it may be great if this uh, leak by uh, let's see, Adore, Adore TV, TV is anything uh, to go by. Yeah, the news comes from WCCF Tech, and they are usually pretty good with vetting rumors. And when they do feature a story, it usually turns out to be mildly accurate. But this is rumors based from Adore TV, which is based on rumors. Yes, so uh, they have, yeah, they have uh, a bunch of uh, filth and lies up that uh, say that the Navi RX 3080, 3070, and 3060 uh, specs and price uh, prices were revealed. So basically the 3080 is going to uh, go in and around the Vegas 64 or the GTX 1080, the... Uh, RX 3070 is going to be in and around the Vega 56 or the 1070, and the Navi 12 is going to be in and around the 1060. So, the 3060, yeah. So, it, you know, the naming scheme seems to line up. That's if this I, I, turns out I, to be I, true, I, that I, is. I, I, mean, I mean, the naming scheme is quite a bit of shots fired. This isn't even the first time that AMD has done it this year. Yeah, uh, X399 uh, versus X299. Well, no, no, not, not even that. Look at the processors. They stole Intel's model scheme as well with the R3, yeah. R5, R7. <laughs> so a AMD, AMD is see, seeing these model numbers and like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have me some of that. Well, this it's going to be, ex listen, it's gonna be extra confusing This for goes consumers. back from the way, way the long ago with... Uh, the old timers will remember when we had the XP series, like the 1200s and 1500s and all that to which, you know, AMD marketing wise, that was a smart move because they did more work per cycle than Intel at the time. So mm -hmm. they had a lower clock speed, but benchmark wise, but you know, Intel did it shady shit and shut that down quick. But I'm looking at this, man, and I really does fall by the old adage. If something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So you might want to take all of this yeah. with a big, heaping grain of chain. So I love listening to Adored TV, YouTube channel. Go check it out. But it usually starts a lot like UFO conspiracy theorist <laughs> videos, which I, I will entertain any day where they're like, well, we know this one little thing that was kind of confirmed by a FOIA request, and I'm going to spend the next hour speculating on that and building a case. But yeah. I'm kind of digging this, man. You know, the 7 nanometer Navi 10 part at 150 watt TDP seems like it, it's a very solid, solid product that if it is going to be able to compete, compete like within 10% with mm -hmm. a 2070 or a 1080 for yes. sub $300, which is well in the realm of belief with a 7 nanometer die shrink. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It, this is doable. This is not like, well, that could never happen. It's like, no, they, they could pull that off at 150 watts. That's got all of my fucking interest. And that no six pin variant, the 75 watt 3060 OEMs are like, shit. I mean, come on. You think, yes, the uh, 750s, 750s TIs are still shipped in mass. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, 750 TIs, uh, 1050s. That, 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 in, that entire X50 series has have been great for NVIDIA because it's entry level gaming with a decent card. That doesn't mm -hmm. require an additional PSU, and mm -hmm. AMD wants them a piece. Yeah, this, especially with the with the no six pin connector, you can just drop that into a system, and away you go. So if they yep. can if they can if they can pull that off, that uh, that is going to be a very very attractive product. But I mean, here, here, here's the real three thousand eight hundred dollar or three <laughs> three thousand eighty dollar question: okay. is whether or not they're going to catch fire or not. 
No. Uh, if these TDPs are to be believed and they have the uh, seven nanometer fab down, no. We'll... I mean, I mean, they said they said that about the tw the twenty series, and you know, l l listen. Yeah. All, all, all I'm saying is that AMD has a history of poor heat management in their products. Yes. We'll see. We'll see. All I'm saying yeah. is, AMD, if you can give me 2070 or 1080 performance without paying the RTX tax, you got my money. Yeah. If, if that 3080 uh, can deliver on those claims, again, like Ven said, within 10%, mm -hmm. you have a chance at competing. Ryzen and, this shit. Just pull it off, please. <laughs> and and, and even, even then, with Linux, again, what's my upgrade path? You pop it into your system, and away you go. Yep. Good news, everyone. Unreal Tournament's no longer being actively developed. Uh, <laughs> Epic has confirmed that the new Unreal Tournament has fallen victim to Fortnite to the surprise of fuck and or all. And its upcoming Steam competitor, which we talked about. Uh, this comes from PC Gamer. All this nonsense in our show notes. Go check that out. There will be a description in the video, maybe even a link. But yeah, since then, you know, Epic's attention's been drawn elsewhere, mainly to, uh, you know, Fortnite. That's where it's been. Now we hear that they're working on the store. Actually, the store's already launched uh, for you mm -hmm. filthy window users. But I don't think this comes to the surprise of really anyone because, I mean, I love getting this for Linux is a pain in the ass because either you build it or you got to go to the forum, register the forum, have your GitHub mm -hmm. thing set up, log in, go to track down that moon thread and see whatever the latest build is, which doesn't include Vulcan, by the way. And the last two times I've tried Unreal Tournament, and let's face it, throughout this thing running on Linux, it's run like poo on Linux, but the last two times I've tried it, uh, it launches, but every time I got in map, I was uh, just greeted by a screen of white. So here, here's the thing, though, and Strider was posting about this um, when the news dropped on Twitter earlier this weekend. As much as it pains me to admit it, I got I got to agree with our uh, resident frog here. This was really the only game that Epic was working on that had anything resembling, and I'm, I'm yeah. emphasis on resembling Linux support, and it's dead. So you know, you know, the Epic Store is going to be like super friendly to open source and Linux, you guys. Like so, here, here, and here, here, here's the other thing too. Like, I don't really know how much effort it takes to develop Fortnite, but that game is pretty much done. If you can't assign like a couple programmers to work on another game that already has most of the skeleton developed, I'm I'm curious about how you actually manage your projects. I mean, uh, the the skeleton of Fortnite is called in real tournament, and why would you go back to the skeleton if you have? Fortnite, which is Fortnite, generating Fortnite. billions of dollars in revenue. Listen, I, I'm not yeah, saying it was just billions. a complete accident that, you know, Unreal <laughs> Engine 4 was able to make this run properly. And somehow we had versions that sort of mostly performed on Linux. Mm -hmm. It was an accident, but it probably was a fucking ac accident because Epic has no love for Linux whatsoever. Nope. They, they, and, uh, they, 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 they hate the Microsoft hegemony, but they don't want to do anything about but it. But do you know who yeah. has no, love uh, for Linux? Tim Sweeney goes out of his ways to not mention Linux at all in his ranty little tweets. Uh, <laughs> Team 17. Hey, man. They show some love to Linux. Yes. Some, some yes, times. they do. <laughs> and it's your fucking story, Jordan. Is it? Oh, yeah, it is. I saw a blue thing. My brain has stopped perceiving colors. All right. Humble Team 17 bundle. Um, it, it's available now for your perusal. Actually, most of the stuff, I think all, actually all of all the games here have Linux support, which is nice. I will say, though, that for the Worms games, that Linux support varies on distro to distro. You may get some crashes or just the game won't launch. But if you're a fan of the Escapists, you will get literally all the fucking DLC. You can get that That's for the uh, pay on the average. DLC. <laughs> um other than that you get panarium uh interplanetary couple worms games and overcooked and sheltered stasis so I, it, it's it's good to see that there there is some company um actually straight up supporting linux development the, mm -hmm. there's one conspicuous team 17 game that's missing that we're throwing chairs at later so i don't know <laughs> that may have something to do with its uh triple a origins I don't know. I um, think uh, Worms Worms is hit or miss. Even on if you're running something as boring and vanilla as like 1804 LTS, a uh, Ubuntu stable or 1604, 
Some of it works, sometimes it does, sometimes it don't. And yeah. Yeah, it, it varies well, from desktop environment to desktop environment. <laughs> hard, hard, hardware to hard. Well, we'll, we'll tell you about the open source, uh, the open source competition on that at the end of the segment. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I mean, like I said, th th this is a great deal if you're a fan of the escapists. Mm -hmm. Not much else. All right. Yeah. Hey, man, Humble doesn't have the only bundle that's worth giving a mention this week. No, no, they do not. Uh, even if uh, this one is mostly to indulge on some of that proton heresy. No, Pedro. This is called getting out of a heretic purchase on a fucking technicality. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. there's like oh, deep, a oh, couple deep, of deep, Linux oh. games in there. You can get sticks, uh, so, Shards of Darkness, for $4.99. Yes. Yeah, you can get for uh, five bucks, you get the Age of Decadence sticks. Uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, Star Wars Force Unleashed, Oxen Free, The King of Fighters 13, Metal Slug X, SimCity 4, and Shadowrun Hong Kong. And yeah, it's uh, Oxen Free and Shadowrun Hong Kong, them's the uh, Linux native ones. I'll, I'll, Though, also also uh, uh, KOTOR 2. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, KOTOR 2, yes. Very good. And... Um, uh, as, you know, someone who likes to indulge in said Proton Heresy, uh, I tried King of Fighters 13. It works really well. Like, surprisingly well. Uh, Metal Slug, it throws a couple of assertion errors as you start it up, but if you Were hit, you able ignore... to click through them? Like, I, I get yeah. an error that is like, bad yeah, of fire. Click OK. Hi, yeah, no, this is uh, a fire that you died in. Deal with it. On my on my end, it was just assertion error, and you could choose to ignore it, and you click ignore twice, and all of a sudden the game works. Mm. So, me. <laughs> I didn't get that love, but I did have some love with the Goblin Stealth game, which ironically is an Unreal Engine 4 game, but mm -hmm. uh, we're having to run on Proton <laughs> because reasons. Uh, I didn't know, I, honestly, I don't know like right now whether or not I genuinely love this game or I absolutely hate this game. All I know is it's kicking my ass thoroughly, repeatedly. It's very performant and it's holding a solid 60 at 1080p with a 980, but, uh, it's pretty good. Runs out of, runs with the steam controller. Fine. Out of the box with Proton, no extra setup. And I mean, I, I'd give it a gold rating. I've not had any problems with it. Uh, yeah, the, and it has multiplayer. So we might get into that <laughs> next week. The, yeah, the, 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 one, also... the one standout title for me, though, here was uh, Force Unleashed, which I played on Xbox back in the day. It was actually a really fun game, and it has a silver rating on uh, ProtonDB. I installed it. I didn't get a chance to play it again, but if you want to chill and be a badass Sith Lord for a few hours, I highly recommend giving uh, Force Unleashed a bit of a gander. According to ProtonDB, you may need to you may need to rename an executable or two or change a value in a config file, but other than that, it runs fine. So mm. Yeah. And there's a couple of more... Um bundles there that also have a lot of linux games uh i also bought the survivors bundle uh which if you pay the full five bucks for it you get uh let's see heart and slash which is a linux native game you get hive swap the coma codex of victory sora the free ones the invisible hours rise of insanity and if you're secret. feeling brave you can like <laughs> click on the link and go check them out yourself Yes, I, 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 I mean, I, you see, I, I, yeah. save any time. I, I mean, I, yeah, I, I mean, for some more, for more, some more Linux support, good months, they got the hentai visual models. You know, you we, we have that. a legitimate prompt, man. All right, a little bit of an aside. I'm not throwing anybody under the bus. Did you, did you see that Steam like cracked down on a couple of games this week? Like the visual novels, they're like, yo, you know what? You can't have kids in your visual novels. And one of the developers came back like, no, we've clearly stated the children were 18 look they had to go to an 18 and plus store and show their id they're clearly 18 um like, yeah l l listen, the, the links that weebs will go to justify their lolly fetish here, is dude all right masterful uh, to watch at times am i crazy i'm like if you have to clarify that the characters in your visual novel are 18 they don't look 18 brad i mean that's japan in a nutshell though isn't it well, here's, here's the other thing, though. Okay, here's the other argument. I, I, I went deep into this, like reading in the Reddit comments. They're like, well, no, it could be a thousand-year-old dragon in the form of a 12-year-old girl. Then I'm like, that's still pedophilia because if it's a thousand-year-old dragon, dude, you know, then like yeah, the you're, other person. You're, you're the kid. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, here, here, here. Like, 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 like I said, pedophiles exist all over the internet, and we'll go through great lengths to convince people that they're seriously not pedophiles. I'm serious, anyway. you guys. They're just... They're just 2D girls. We, we, we got a legitimate they, 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 problem. They, they we love me like have a legitimate problem on Linux. There's too many games. We can't get enough fucking work done. 
Right. Well, at least you're not on NetBSD. So, um, like the, 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 this this is this is a blog post from uh, Dress Up Geek Out Tech. Um, so the, the, this lady has gone on a bit of an adventure. Um, you 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 know, if you want to get some work done, you actually got to go to NetBSD because you know you can't play games. That's not going to stop this person. Um, so they're they're trying to get um, they're trying to get some data out of some installer files so that they can use the open source engine re-implementations. Um, and apparently, um, the the archive format. Um, well, there, there's a difference between BSD tar and GNU tar, um, and some sometimes that messes up uh, people. Um, so what this person found is that if you download the um, if you download the Windows installers and use cap extract to read through all the game files, you can get something resembling an installer working and running under. Um, or you can get Mojo installer from uh, Ethan, or actually I think it was uh, Ryan who developed that, um, mm -hmm. working under uh, BSD. And they actually got a graphical version of this working as well. The idea here, I think what she was planning on doing was for something like Pyre, um, you can use a natively compiled FNA and just relink the binaries to, um, yeah. to uh, you know, work on your system, which is actually pretty hardcore if you're going to go through the trouble of gaming on BSD. Uh, FNA is probably one of the easier things to do. It's not going to work without that uh, BSD compiled version of FMOD, though, for handling all the audio <laughs> Um, and they only really got a uh, they only really got a graphical install working. But this is a cool little uh, blog post, sort of exploring someone's deep dive into uh, various packaging formats. And I how just to wanted to throw some work. love, man. I was like, that that's nerding out on a next level right there. Yeah. Oh, abs absolutely. And, uh, that, that, that's some, that's some hardcore of the hardcore that, shit. That is that's <laughs> legitimately doing something because it told you you couldn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one thing she found is that if you run the uh, the GOG uh, Linux installer after you've installed the, uh, the Linux compatibility layer on BSD, uh, if you run that through the terminal, it gives you an end curses type of uh, UI that you can almost get the game to install. Uh, she also had to uh, fix the um, Suzy compatibility layer that uh, she had installed. But yeah, no, after that, the game just installed just fine. Of course, it's still easier to run the Windows version with, you know, Inno Extract. <laughs> or, or actually play, play the Windows version using a BSD compiled wine, which would probably... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Confusing but, news, everyone. THQ oh Nordic has bought Carmageddon. So get ready for good. more gory racing to, uh, I, I think, uh, on behalf of all of Linux gamers, fuck you, stainless. Eat a bag of dicks while dying in a fire. <laughs> You fucking yeah. hacks. Um, <laughs> and here's the, the thing, thing man, here is... uh, to finish that sentence, Pedro, THQ Nordic has finished the deal to acquire Carmageddon IP from the developers of Stainless Games. As to how much the publisher paid for the IP, well, you know what? They're not going to disclose that. But you know what? That doesn't make me sad. What I need to know is will you tell me, just tell me to my face, say, listen, you know, that first stretch goal for that kick, Carmageddon reincarnation Kickstarter, the one we immediately blew through, that you gave us money for all those years ago, you're not going to fucking get it. I just need you to mm -hmm. tell me that because I need some closure. Okay, could you do that for me, THQ? I think they can. And in fact, they probably will. What really irked me about this post was uh, Stainless founder Patrick Buckland says, This deal allows Carmageddon to find the home that it deserves. As an independent developer, we have invested a huge amount of time and money into the brand since reacquiring it in 2012. Yeah, we all saw what you did with that. But we never had the resources to maximize its exploitation. Excuses. Uh, it is our intention to work with a THQ Nordic moving forwards, allowing Carmageddon to find its rightful place in the video games pantheon. Um, THQ, can you give Stainless the boot, please? Like, now? Just tell him to fuck off immediately? No, man. Sure, you see, what sure, we need to do that. is we need to release like three more mobile apps and make an engine all by ourselves, even though we don't know how to fucking do it. L l Clearly. Listen, listen, man, they'll get around to it after they release Metro Exodus brought to you by Virtual Programming. Speaking of, <laughs> man, all right. When you say VP, I'm like, why not Proton? Same thing, except, you know, Proton works. Uh, yeah. Here's the thing, man. I, I even tried recently with Carmageddon Reincarnation, which I did get a copy because I backed mm -hmm. it. It's just Windows. Proton can't even help that pile of shit, man. It gets like Neither, four frames yeah. a second. 
neither max damage nor um uh, no, neither reincarnation nor max damage which was the other one that you also got if you backed their kickstarter it no the t- stainless pooped the bed on this one and they can go fuck themselves so just give him the boot thq please Go, oh, go, gotta love that Vix cussing. Darn you, you donkey raping motherfuckers! <laughs> Darn you to heck! Um, okay, so we're talking. We're talking about how if you want to play uh, Worms under Linux, you may have some mixed results. Well, instead, you can go go play Hedge Wars, which is an open source version of Worms that actually works. Oh my god! Um, version not nine twenty five has been released. Um, there's a lot of. Um, there's a lot of like game balance stuff that they've done. You can customize uh, distributions of uh, weapons that are being uh, given to players on any given turn. They have more taunts. There's a sudden death bug fix. Uh, but we 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 gotta we gotta say goodbye to one of the dearest dearest components of Hedge Wars that will no longer exist. We gotta we gotta rip that rubber duck. No no more rubber duckies. <laughs> a- a- fair, apparently, no as- one was using it. <laughs> Yeah, as, as a weapon, it was too confusing and too circumstantial. So they finally we got rid of it. Was it was like overpowered. It was they had to nerf it. <laughs> no, no, Listen, no, no, it, it, unfur- just, it no unfurls its using. nine light year long corkscrew penis and just fucks <laughs> everyone on the map. Happens. <laughs> Happens. <laughs> nope. Good to know. Not nine two five. It's out. It's free, and it is honestly a better love story than some of the worst games. <laughs> Most of the yeah. worst games. <laughs> and the fact that it runs well. It can be a bitch sometimes to get up and run. It is not without faults, but it's been a while since I've tried it. Maybe I'll give it another go. Yeah, and mo- yeah. most actually, most of the time you can just install it through your uh, distributions repositories, so that's really easy to get up and running. Yeah, good to know. Uh, yeah, coming up next, it's been I don't know I don't know when did that Kickstarter end? Nine it's been X number of years in, in the making. <laughs> <laughs> fix, fix it in post, Ben. Go to fix hell. this entire show in post. It's on fire. It's the acquisition. This is where we take a game. We tell you if it launches, how it performs, what the graphics are like, and how it controls. Maybe give it a pass, rate that on pass fail, give it a score one to four chairs. Then we talk about our feelings. We tell you how we like the game, and we rate that on arbitrary metric of one to four chairs. This week, we're, t- we're taking a look at Ukulele from Playtronic Games. It was kickstarted many, many, many moons ago. You can pick it up for about 40, 40 US dollars, which is really, really expensive. What is it? Ukulele is an all new open world platformer from genre veterans Playtonic. Explore Hugo, beautiful worlds, meet unforgettable cast of characters, and hoard a vault load of collect- collectible collect- collectomaniacs wah, wah. as, as uh, buddy duo <laughs> Yuka and Lele embark on an epic adventure to, cor- to thwart corporate creep capital B. <laughs> all right, that, 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 that's an intro, all right. That's so that, let, was, that was definitely there, there, there's there you go. Uh, so, chair acquisition. Then, how, how does ukulele run on gonna, uh, on Ubuntu's? Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to break your game on three different systems: Ubuntu, Fedora, and Solus. I'm going to start off with that LTS goodness on how it ran on my Ryzen 1700 with a 980 displayed at UHD. I hope you like windowed mode because it launches in windowed mode no matter what. You know, you do have to fiddle with the screen resolution in game to make it pop full screen. I, I could not find a way around this. It reliably launched in a 3840 by 2160 window. And until I jiggled, giggity, then I changed the resolution a little bit. I don't know if I really had to jiggle, but I like to do that. Then it would pop into full screen goodness every single time. Performance. I was a bit worried about that when the game first launched. Uh, it is the Unity joint, OpenGL. Uh, reports that it didn't run all that well, but here it is coming to the end of 2018 it runs just fine with the 980 at 1080p solid 60 59 60 right there but nothing any lower than that graphically it does look a lot better than i was expecting even though you're seeing you know hipster pixel goodness because of course pedro played the dumb mini game uh i liked it it's not hipster it's pixel. nice <laughs> it's bright it, the three models look straight out of the fuck mothering eight well not 80s 90s Late 90s, too. It even has a dancing save icon. Come on. That's charming. For as it comes down to control, quitting is an option with the ukulele. Seriously. Quit is in the fucking <laughs> options menu. You can't make that up. That took me a minute. Wow. Um, then you got to fight the camera. You know, there there's an option to put the camera on manual. And even on manual, that camera is still a bit of a dick. And when it comes to controls... I'm not going to say floaty as fuck. Pedro always says floaty as fuck. And they're not. They're not. But I will say 
Uh, Floaty as fuck's second nephew. All right, 100% on that. You can legitimately blame the controls for getting you killed to death on occasion. That's just, that's a fact with this game. I'm not the only one saying that. Go look at the Steam reviews if you don't believe me. Uh, sometimes the controls and the camera, however, get together and do this tag team of nope, and it's straight up <laughs> dying to fire city. And you can't even be mad at it because he's like, there's no way I could have unfucked that situation. Thanks. Anyway. Pretty much a clean bill of health, except for that windowing issue, because that's kind of a dick move every single time you want to play a game. But I'm going to be able to give it a solid three. Yeah, I had no such uh, windowing issues, um, although all of a sudden disabling VSync on my system made it favor my leftmost monitor. So I had to shift my position. That was a little <laughs> strange, but nothing, nothing to gameplay ruining worthy. Uh Performance wise, yeah, it, my 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 1080 Ti run, running this uh, with Fedora 28 and i7 6700 K had no problem dealing with this game. It curb checked it at UHD. I was getting about um, 60 usually. I, I didn't I didn't notice any particularly bad drops. I wasn't eyeing the little uh, reticle whatever the entire time. Um, yeah, graphics wise, I mean they're they're simple. They get the job done. They're definitely reminiscent of that sort of N64 era rare platformer that this game is targeting the nostalgia of. Um, yeah, every, 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 everything is definitely colorful. I'll give it that. Um, some of the some of the, some of the speech, though, everyone just kind of sounds like they're having boring sex. They're going, uh, <laughs> 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 Now, I, now there, there's, there's actually like a, there's actually some really interesting stories as to why that was the case in Banjo-Kazooie and their games. And Grant Her Kirkhope has like a bunch of, uh, talks and videos about why things are what they are but unfortunately we're not on we're not on the n64 we're on you know modern pcs with multiple Dude, cpus did, when you noticed that there was an option to shut it the hell up when you're like oh, oh thank flying spaghetti mm -hmm. monster oh no i I, I muted that right away um yeah Quit, quitting being an option was kind of weird i just like when i didn't find the first pass i'm like also okay, i would more. like to apologize for pedro playing a fucking mini game <laughs> oh yeah, the yeah I don't play it again. It's just that the game tricked me. <laughs> no, it, yeah, the, the the menus definitely do that when you're like trying to get out of a dialogue. It does the Zelda thing where it's like, do you want to hear this again? No, I mean yes. I mean shit. What did I press? And then you go through the <laughs> you go through the entire spiel again. Um, control wise, it works out of the box with the DualShock Four controller. Of course, you get the Xbox prompts, but this is sort of life. If you're if you're gonna be living that DualShock life, you gotta you gotta learn how to deal with that. I'll give it a solid four chairs. No real technical issues. Um, that that I ran into at least, yeah. All right, so uh, over here I ran into all the technical issues. Uh, I am playing on Solus uh, with the GTX 1080 and the Ryzen 5 1600. So uh, it launches if you have the game set to full screen, and it all it always launches in that window. But then it full screens once it uh, gets to the menu proper. So uh, that bit works just fine. But if you have the go of changing it to windowed mode um i hope you don't have a graphics card that can uh, you know output a maximum resolution of 32,767 pixels by 32,767 pixels because the game will do its damnedest to render at that resolution and it will fail miserably uh but yeah it's um it doesn't it it, that's an annoying bit, but if you just leave it at full screen, it works just fine, but it's still losing a chair because of that. The performance at 1080p was 60, at 2160p it was 60, so really no complaints there. The graphics, they're pretty and cell shaded the sounds get annoying after a little bit, and fuck that quote-unquote voice acting. And uh, the controls, the 8-bit 2, where is it? There it is. 8-bit um, 2 controller. Worked out of the box. No Probably issues here. Listeners. But when the uh, when I realized that if you push the right trigger and the right button, but right bumper at the same time, it would cause uh, the game to see these two buttons as like the start button. And that got really annoying, so I wanted to go and change it, and I couldn't. So, no rebindable controls in 2018 loses you another chair. So, two chairs from me on Solus. All right, well, 
Again, that gaming distribution solace makes gaming real, really easy under Linux, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, up next, fun. Ven, did you have fun with uh, your $40 game that you got for like five? Hey, man. Uh, I've never not cared about something so hard in my life. <laughs> really. Now, I don't want you to confuse that with hate or even mild anger. It's more of an extreme indifference, if anything. Because by the time Banjo-Kazooie rolled out, I'd already bought a Voodoo 1 and separated myself from the filthy console peasants. So what can I say about ukulele? You run around, you collect things to expand things that let you ultimately collect more things. The game. The worlds, they're mostly empty, and the baddies, eh, they're effectively the same, providing more of an annoyance versus any real challenge that I could find. The puzzles, they're sometimes complicated, but I kind of felt that was mainly due to them being not very well telegraphed. So, kind of coming from a zero nostalgia point of view, I have a rather primitive uh, collect-a-thon with a paper-thin story, slippery controls that does a little more than remind me of what games did wrong in the old days. It's not bad, though. You know, if you're going to say anything differently from that, it's because of one of two things. One, ukulele does an excellent job of reminding you of a different time from the long, long ago. And good on this game for being able to do that. And so you're able to overlook some of its shortcomings. And hey, man, I feel you on that. I got the same feels for other games like Axiom Verge. It reminded me of some old Metroid goodness, and it had flaws that I could easily overlook. I don't have it with this game. Or maybe it's option two. You're still trying to justify paying 30 bucks for this fucking game. <laughs> All right. Uh, at the end of the day, I'll give this one tier. Because if I paid 40 bucks for this, I would have fucking refunded it. Uh, I know some people have mad love for this game. Plenty of respect to you uh, if it brings you back to that good, good time. However, I feel 2017, 2018, don't have it for this, man. There's a whole lot of what I basically took as empty ass worlds with nothing to do other than explore. I will say good on the developers for hiding shit because I've straight up got <laughs> fallen off cliffs because of the camera, uh, and ended up in some places like I should not be here. And there was a fucking feather. It's like, <laughs> what really? I don't even know how I could get here intentionally. So good on you for that. What about you, Jay baby? Yeah, that, that was the thing. I, I sort of noticed the opposite uh, for your final point of like, there are a couple places where I'd be like, you know what, this seems like it's it's allowing me to go up here and it's really out of the way. So maybe there's something up here and then there wasn't. I'm like, well, that's kind of a missed <laughs> opportunity. One of, the, one of the cool things about Breath of, the, Breath of the Wild is that there's so much shit like randomly thrown throughout the map that you can't you can't like fucking take three steps without running into something. And being like, oh, someone deliberately put this there. This is really cool. Someone, th this came up during designer development. And they figured either th this is going to be a thing that's going to attract people or, you know, someone's going to find their way up here. We should give them something. Um, but playing the game, I, I played a bunch of Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie back in the N64 days. And it's basically that with the serial numbers filed off. Uh, Mr. Foxdog <laughs> has some opinions about that. And yes, I understand. That is the point of the game. But again, we're in 2018, so I've, I've played this game already. I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a bog-standard 3D platformer. It sort of harkens back to the N64 era of, hey, here's a bunch of stuff you can do. Hey, we have physics. Hey, you can sort of... You you have you have that third axis that you can explore. Um, but yeah, like Ben said, you run around, collect things, do some puzzles, unlock power-ups to do more puzzles, to unlock more puzzles, to rinse and repeat. And there's certainly a lot of stuff to do. There's lots of little challenges and... Um, quests and you got to go collect all your pages and you'll periodically get more challenges after getting more and more pages. Um, but yeah, no, the, the complaints, of course, the camera sucks. There's there's one challenge in the in the first level where you have to like go through this slippery obstacle course and the camera just I, I had it lined up perfectly so I can make all the jumps necessary and the camera's all like, Haha, well, no. Um, and I mean, it's 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 a perfectly serviceable bull game. There, there's there's well, like I shit. mean, just like on the topic of controls, what we're looking at is doing the target range. How much of a crapshoot oh. is that? <laughs> so so that that was a crapshoot until they, just uh, how much of a crapshoot that is. Well, well, it, what, what, what's what's great too is after you leave, they're like, by the way, we didn't tell you this when you could have needed it, but if you hold down the left stick, you get a little targeting reticule that you can use. <laughs> That's um, that is necessary for some of the later pu puzzles where you have to like 
where you have to actually like line up your shot while uh, like a crank is in a specific position so you can generate platforms to climb up on. Um, but I, I mean, like that's sort of part for the course for these sort of N64 3D platformer games. And it does a good job of representing what they were. And if you like them, then you'll probably have fun playing ukulele. It's a, like, it's a, it, like I said, it's a perfectly serv serviceable game, but it's not $45 good. And that, that, that's really where this game sort of falls through is if, if, if you price that at like $15, I would, I would without, without hesitation, give this a recommendation, but you know, for paying in excess of 30, no, it's, you're, you're not, you're not, you're not going to get that value there. So I'll give it two chairs. It's solid. It's all right. Yeah. Andrew? I didn't have an N64. I didn't even know anyone with one. Uh, when it comes to, uh, Benjo Kazooie, I have zero nostalgia for that game. So for this one, yeah, it doesn't even get that. Um, that said, it's a game about collecting things just so you can unlock other areas that, you guessed it, you collect more things. And back in the day, that was enough. That was what games were for. You, It, it was basically an exercise in repetition, and it was fine because, well, the technology didn't allow for much of anything else. Nowadays, the sole reward for doing one thing being more of that thing it's just a bit meh and well i would say that the uh ukulele is a good game for a proto human but after my brother rabbit and the gardens between and how much those games did with far far less in the way of anything uh it's uh th that argument seems a whole lot less poignant so yeah, if you got that uh, Humble Bundle that had this game on like the $5 tier or something, that was great. That, that That's what you should uh, be paying for this game. If you're paying full price, just don't. Yeah, just, just don't. So for me, it gets two chairs because it's perfectly acceptable for what it is. It's just not blowing anyone's mind. All right, mm. well, there you go. Ukulele. It's been however long since this game released. We finally got a chair position out for it. So now mm -hmm. you can know if it's worth it to spend your 45 Canadian dollars. Coming up next, we got a little bit of hate mail, and then we're going to get the hell out of here and see if we can crash Counter-Strike some more. And it's just about time we wrap this up. What do you say? No, that's, you're uh, not real. I may not you're be real. I may only be a voice in your head. Chances are, if you're listening to us on headphones right now, I am just a voice in your head. So this is a multi-track, so, so I'm going to chop that sentence up and redo it. <laughs> is this the real life? <laughs> is this just fantasy? So, hey, if you'd like to know, uh, or if you'd like to let us know that we're not real people and our opinions don't matter, you can go to linksgamecast.com. You hit the contact button. Make sure to pick LGC Weekly from the little oh god <laughs> a little yeah. choosy box and no don't go to spice world <laughs> spice up your life people the word spice up your life <laughs> and yeah just uh, send us uh, send us your message we will be happy to feature it right here right now with a single caveat that uh, if you uh if the question that you're asking can be answered by a Google search and the answer is on the first page, you don't get featured. Also, if you're a game developer and you'd like to send us keys, please do. We're always looking for more games to play. And you, all you need to do is include three keys or a copy that we can share amongst all of us. That's or all we ask for. Just do it through our Steam please. thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Use Steam Curator Connect. That that works really well, Somebody actually. Somebody sent us some something, but... <laughs> Fuck you, Valve. Yeah, you don't tell me what check. it is. So, yeah, I haven't checked either. <laughs> All right. All right. So, first up, it's me in spirit from last week. It's empty. Apparently, he said something wrong. I guess uh, that's a bit of a curse with this particular slot. So, uh, in the spirit of covering for me, uh, I said something wrong. I claim that everyone who had their key revoked by the trigger-happy dev had received a new key. TLDR and the gala is an evil, and the dev is a jerk with no friends left. In the spirit of correct reporting, it should be noted that the key reseller and the gala took the hit and made right with all of their directly affected customers. And the gala sewer key reseller groupie did not 
uh, or didn't, and everyone who bought keys from them got nothing. The dev generated 10,000 free Steam keys and sold them to Indie Gallo, which is a violation of the Steam seller's agreement. It states that devs should also make all of their reduced price sales available on Steam if they are on other storefronts. Valve was especially displeased that the dev had generated all the keys for a zero and in an, uh, in an effort to bypass paying the Steam tax while still utilizing their infrastructure. Yeah, that's a big no no. That, well, that, that, the, that's... The, the thing is that in that entire kerfuffle is basic was basically just like the dev making mistake after mistake after mistake. It was your, it was your typical mistake. fuck cascade, uh followed yeah. by your very typical recession of a uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean you could fucking write oh so yeah. Thanks. Pennywise also said he knows how to send three keys. He sent us gifts. Thank yes. you, Pennywise. <laughs> Thank you, Pennywise. He's trying to inflict games on us. That's something our audience does because they love us. Like sometimes, yeah. I think. Sometimes games show up and I'm like, do you really love but, us? Or yeah, is this my, like my, a personal my, my, thing? My, Are you angry at me? What have I done? Uh, they, they, they love us much in the same way that that one dude really loved John Lennon before he stabbed him. Yeah. Oh, you mean uh, Stephen King? Look yeah. it up, man. Wake yeah, up, shit. Yeah, people. yeah it, it's, the, it's the other Stephen King. Uh, okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, yeah, that developer was just a dick, and it I think pretty much mm-hmm. ended predictably uh, as dick moves like that goes. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. as we said, you know how this ends, and that's how it's yeah, going. there's something and, and, to be and, and, said and, and, for and, doubling down, and there's also something to be said for quadrupling or quintupling it down, which is what he did. <laughs> I understand, like in the heat of no, listen, nobody likes to admit that they're wrong. I'm like, I don't like admitting when I'm wrong, but I like to be wrong because <laughs> if I'm wrong, that means I learned something. Yeah, and, being, yeah. Being, being wrong is the first step in being right. Right. And usually after your third salvo, if you if you're like on phase three of fucking mental gymnastics or justifying your bullshit, you're wrong. It's probably time just well, go uh, quiet. At that point, em, just go em, quiet. Go em, 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 empty empty diet. empty put it very succinctly. He basically says, Dev is jerk, has no friends left. And that's pretty much the truth. It's the truth. Mm-hmm. And up next up, from Dementor, next. send us a message on Patreon. So that means that Insta shows up on the show because we love you like it, that. Uh, it, it does. He, writes, he doesn't uh, like my I got it. Don't thing. worry about it, baby. All right. <laughs> uh, it's me again. Just something I wanted to mention. Last time I checked, streaming to another site at the same time, because, hey, we're uh, simulcasting on Twitch and YouTube using magical moon technology. Uh, time is against uh, uh, Twitch's terms and conditions and could get your accounts banned. And it also says, P.S., I just found a cool project that's worth a mention, moonlight-stream.org. Okay. In order, I got back to him on Patreon. Good like that. Uh, you can do it. You can stream to both services. The only time Twitch gets twitchy about it is if you're a Twitch partner. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you have an account where people can subscribe and, you know, they just take half of everything, period, uh, then you can't do it. Outside of that, you can do what you want. Yeah, and it I, was... Uh... I actually thought the tubes were the ones that cracked down on people making videos. It's like, oh, I'm live on Twitch. No, can't do that anymore. That's what they cracked down on. Uh, both yeah. of them had that fight because people were like, hey, you know, they would have like a release. And it's like, come watch me over here. Or they would be releasing that video on Twitch as a whatever. And it's like, come watch me on YouTube. Which, mm-hmm. listen, I don't know, man. Fortunately, we have the beautiful party patrons. So we got to worry oh, about yes. that nonsense. And we can keep on going. But uh, what was the uh, Mo- ha- uh, Moonlight stream? It yeah. used to be it used to be Limelight. Uh, this, we were we were talking about that a little bit earlier when we were talking about the uh, Steam Link app on the Raspi. Uh, mm-hmm. People were using this for NVIDIA game streaming. Um, and the, the project apparently got renamed. It used to be Limelight. Now it's Moonlight. Um, any anything capable of broadcasting game streaming, which is not going to be available under Linux. Uh, this will this will act as a receiver for that. So you can um, so you can set up your own little Steam streaming infrastructure if you have a Windows computer to stream the games from. Mm, um, yes. But then that, that's that's pretty much it. I just want to say there's like a weird... It's not necessarily a net neutrality issue, but like Twitch or YouTube can't dictate what you do with the RTMP traffic that you generate from your computer. Um, I guess they can still... You're using account, their service. Well, so if they, you yeah, agree they, to their I, I, account I service, they service. fucking can, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> the, the, I mean, they, they can, they can nuke, your, nuke your account, but again, what, whatever. We have no rights in the internet age. It is brilliant. And on that wonderful, happy, upbeat bombshell, 
about let's cue the music you can always find us around 9 30 eastern standard moon time that's where we do this and keep promising to do an early show we couldn't do it this week because there was a party waiting on us at this time maybe next week or the week after that i don't know keep throwing it out there anyway i'm at Vin stone on twitter you can get a hold of me there i will click the heart button sometimes retweet you maybe talk to you back it's one of those things I'm Jordan Swung. You can find me taking traffic from YouTube and streaming it on Switch and taking that traffic and streaming it on Dailymotion and taking that traffic and streaming it on Steam. You can find me doing all that nonsense or none of that nonsense at the Burning Fuel on Twitter, at Frojo, at our Mastodon, at mass.nisgamecast.com or for now, plus Jordan Swung at Google+. Plus. Yeah, you cannot find me streaming on Switch, mostly because I don't have the one. Switch doesn't exist. <laughs> Switch, it's, the, it's the Switch store, man. There are too many, there are too many games streaming on the Switch. Yeah, but you can always find me at unaccounted for on Twitter or at unaccounted for on mass.linuxcapecast.com. I am Pedro Mateos, and uh, bye bye, everyone. Bye. All right, and, you delightful and, and you bye bitches. Bye. Did we learn anything <laughs> tonight? Uh, this I, evening. I, your mom Maybe? <laughs> not 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 really no this is one of those rare episodes where no one improved at all period rare he says like that's not Bitch. the norm <laughs> hey we made it through another one it's kind of brilliant oh it's... yes <laughs> have we have we gotten to episode cc cccv yet <laughs> CCCXIX. Yeah. 329, yeah. Yeah. We, we, we've already surpassed episode CCV. Oh, yeah. We were in CCV for a while. That is all the people. I'm thinking very much. Oh, they, yes. they, 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 they gave us enough money to do a limited run of uh, t shirts and coffee mugs. Fuck that, that one, too. Yeah, <laughs> fuck, fuck them ones that may not. <laughs> What, what, what you see on the store may not be what arrives. If you get a bunch of PewDiePie merch after buying our shit, then you know what happens. Their printers got hacked because uh, what's their name from India are uh, overtaking PewDiePie. Oh, uh, T whatever. T series, yes. T series, yeah. <laughs> Man, I don't follow any of that shit, but I knew that somehow. I knew the T part. I, I, yeah, I didn't know it's all over the internet. <laughs> I, 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 I knew there was something about PewDiePie, but that was literally the extent of it. Dying fire. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Five dudes. <laughs>